Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a fun new tutorial about how to create 3D images on Facebook using Photoshop and some tricks with your iPhone. So you might have seen some 3D photos stop popping up around Facebook, but one thing you can do if you dig into the tools is create your own, either with your own photos that weren't taken with the iPhone in portrait mode, or if you have a layered Photoshop composition or any sort of graphics or DSLR photos or anything that you can bring into Photoshop and cut up, you can create this cool 3D photo that creates this parallax effect that'll show up on Facebook and get a lot of people's attention. So here's an example I put together with some assets from the movie Black Panther. And I put this together using some tricks in Photoshop and then pushing the photos over to the iPhone and using some tricks in the iPhone and some extra apps to put it all together. So this is again using the iPhone eventually to edit and upload this. There are probably some ways to do it on Android or the desktop, but this is my preferred method and the method I've found out that works the best. So that's what we're gonna go with for this video. Let's jump right in and get started. So here we have in Photoshop the elements that I wanna use to create this 3D photo, and I need to put them together and do a couple steps to create the depth mat that is going to allow for that parallax feature. And when I talk about depth maps, what I'm talking about is if we take a look at the final images that I used for this project, we have our main image, and then we have a duplicate of that image that is in black, white, and shades of gray. And how a depth map works is if we take a look at this, the background is white, the object closest to the camera is black, and everything in between is varying shades of gray depending on how further back you want it to be or closer to the camera. So in this case, the character for Black Panther is about 25 to 50% gray, kind of in between that range. So that's what we would wanna do if we want things to shift in 3D space and create that parallax effect with a couple different layers. So to recreate this, what I'm going to do is create a new document and I'm going to make my composition 1125 by 1500. Now it's important to use this aspect ratio because if you use something taller or wider, once you combine these two images later on, things are going to get squished and compressed or stretched and not look how you have it in mind. So it's important to start with these settings. I'm going to press create. And now I have my new document and then I just need to drag my elements and copy them into this canvas, scale them up how I want them to appear, making sure to not crop everything too much. And that's good. And then I'm going to do the same thing and drag my logo over, rename this logo and rename my other layer main photo because it's always good to name your layers. I'll make this a smart object just so if I scale it down too much and want to scale it back up, I can fix that later. And I'll put that into place. And I'm actually going to mask off the Marvel Studios logo by creating a mask around that and inverting. You could also just do that by selecting the main logo for Black Panther and creating a mask if you don't like doing two steps or don't want to use the hotkeys. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing that is actually because smaller objects tend to get distorted and not quite worked that well. If we take a look at this clip of a test I did trying to make that Marvel logo also one of the layers, smaller elements that are overlapping with other elements can kind of give you problems. So there is a bit of trial and error that you'll want to go through when working through this. So now we have our main image. I'm going to group both of those and just call this main image. And now we need to create that depth map. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that whole layer set with command J. I'll call this depth map map with a p and open this up and we have our logo on a different layer but our image is just one flattened image and we need to separate these into multiple layers to change the colors and this technique could work on other photos if you shot something with a dslr or even just a bunch of graphics if you just had a graphic design layout that had no photos and you wanted to separate the elements into layers on different shades of black white and gray to create a depth map what we need to do is select that character and create a new layer with just that character. Now there's a bunch of different ways we could do that. What I'm gonna do is grab the wand tool by pressing W and I could paint that character, but one new feature of CC 2019 is there's this select subject button. And if I click that, it's gonna run through a process and try to figure out what your subject is. And it gets pretty close, which is nice. And then I can just zoom in and make some adjustments. So just press option or alt click to subtract things that aren't the subject and then clicking 
to put things back that are the subject. So I'll just do that real quick. And then if I want to refine that and make sure it's really selecting what I want it to, I can go to select and mask, and that's going to give me this overlay view of that mask and let me do things like smooth the mask that's around it, feather it, create contrast, shift the edge in and out. I'll leave that at zero. And then I can save it as a new layer, a new layer mask or anything I want to use to create that separate layer. I'll do new layer with mask and click OK and call this character. Turn back on that background layer. And now all I need to do is fill those layers with different colors. So the way I like to do this is just by using layer styles and color overlay. We could just fill each layer with black and white. But the problem with that is if we want to change it back or change it to a different gray, it's destructive. So we have to kind of do more work later. So what I like to do is go to layer, layer style, color overlay. And we can just fill the background with white and we'll click OK. And then we can copy that layer style and just paste it to the next layer open up that color overlay and just change that to a gray in between click OK and same thing with our logo we can paste layer style open it up and we'll make that either black or close to black just so there is a clear difference between our foreground middle ground and background now I have my depth map and my main image so I just need to save those out so I'll do that by doing a file save for web or a command shift option s I'll go to JPEG and make sure my quality is 100 and then I'll click save. I'll call this Black Panther 005 because I had to do some tests to get to this point. So you can kind of see there's some trial and error that goes into this. And then I'll show that depth map layer. Same thing, save that out as a JPEG and I'll call that 005 mat. Now we just need to get these over to the iPhone for the next series of steps and ultimately uploading those to Facebook. So what I like to do to do that the quickest and easiest way, go grab those two images and then open up airdrop, which you can get by pressing command space or going to search and typing in airdrop, double clicking. And it's going to open up the devices or phones nearby that have airdrop turned on. So I'll just drag those over and it's going to copy those to my phone. You could also email them to yourself, or use Google drive, Dropbox, or any way that you want to use to get the photos onto your camera roll. Now the photos will show up in the photos app on my phone, but to get them to combine into one image that will be read as a 3D photo from Facebook, we need to do one more thing. I've been using the app depth cam, which is a 3D depth camera app for the iPhone that you can get in the app store. This isn't an ad for them. I just like using this app for this purpose and you can take photos with it, but what you can do is load in your own from the camera roll. So I'll just do that real quick, select that photo I made in Photoshop, and then I'm going to click import depth map. That's going to allow me to grab that black and white image from all photos. And the last thing I need to do in this app is tap that bottom right icon and then tap save Facebook 3D photo. That's going to save it to my camera roll. So now if I go back to my photos app, in addition to the original photos, if I scroll over now, there's one that says portrait mode on top of it that looks the same, but it's a portrait mode photo in our iPhone. And when we go over to Facebook, we can go over to our profile, scroll down, tap status, find the 3D photos button, and that's going to load up all of our portrait mode photos, which now it reads it as a portrait mode photo because we combined it in that depth cam app. And if we load that and pan our phone around, we can see it's working. It looks awesome. It looks exactly how I wanted it to. And we didn't need to take the photo with portrait mode. So then we can just type whatever our status or post is into Facebook. When we're done, we can tap share. It's going to load it on my page. And now there you can see it's working. You can pan around, you get this parallax effect in Facebook. And if we scroll up and down, you can see it's working really cool. And it does a nice preview of the 3D effect and the parallax effect working. So that is how you set up Facebook 3D photos using Photoshop and layered graphics. And if you want to know how to just take photos in portrait mode and use them for 3D photos for Facebook in your iPhone, check out that other video that's popping up. If you have any questions or want to talk about tutorials or other tips, be sure to check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. And you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. And be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where I have tons more tutorials and articles on motion graphics, 3D animation, visual effects, and all sorts of stuff in that industry. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Mm -hmm.